Oh boy, what a mess. I test a lot of gear on Thrifty AV and I'm regularly hooking one thing up to another and I need the right cord, cable, or adapter to do that. But sometimes I don't put them up right when I'm done with my video shoot and I end up with something like this. Today I was gonna do a cleanup. I thought, might as well make a video about it. But don't worry, it's not just me sorting these. It'll be me explaining these as I go through it. So I'm gonna start with this big pile here. HDMI doesn't belong with these analog cables. I'm going to put one of these Velcro straps on anything that doesn't have one. When I start running low on cable wraps, I break out the wire ties. This doesn't belong in there. I was pleased to find two S-Video cables in this RCA stuff. Uh, these come in handy a lot uh, when I'm dealing with video. I'm going to put them with my video cables. I've removed all my power cables, HDMI cables, and other video cables. Everything here now is RCA cable related in one form or another. Either they have RCA plugs on both sides or an RCA plug on one side and a different type of connector on the other. RCA connectors were developed in the 1940s by the Radio Corporation of America, RCA, to hook up phonograph turntables to amplifiers. They were also called phono connectors at the time. RCA connectors were designed to be used with coaxial cable with the signal wire running through the core. This is also called positive or hot. The core wire has insulation and is surrounded by a ground sheath that wraps around the signal wire. Over time, this connector started being used for other things such as DC power connection, RF connection like on the Atari loudspeaker connection, composite video, component video, and SPDIF digital audio. Let's check out the 3.5 millimeter mini plug to RCA adapters. Everything here has TRS connections on one side and right and left audio on the other side. And you may wonder why three conductors on one side will work when there's two conductors here and two conductors here is because they share a ground. Now this is the most interesting one that has a TRS connection because it has a TRS with video and two channels of audio and that is just not possible with a TRS which makes me think that this is dual mono. And I like this one too because it doesn't have plugs for the RCAs, it has jacks. And that lets you run uh, a longer RCA to RCA cable to some other source. What I'm going to do next is going to be somewhat tedious, but I think it's important. Some of these cables are 30 plus years old and they're not good. So I'm going to get an ohm meter and do continuity checks with all of these cables. The first thing I want to check out is my theory that this is actually a dual mono setup. So what I'm going to do, one way to check it is to connect the center pin on the left with the center pin on the right. And this uh, ohm meter is buzzing at me. Same thing happens with the ground these two channels are the exact same signal. So what I want to do is I want to put some kind of thing on here letting me know that this is not a stereo connection but a dual mono connection. I ran into something interesting while testing these cables. The tip 
on a TRS stereo connection is supposed to be left channel hot but on this cable it's right channel hot I opted to go with this okay I have another one the tip on this one is right channel hot so out of seven cables two of them were reversing the left and right channels and getting the stereo backwards here's a simple trick if you have a Van Halen album most of Eddie Van Halen's guitar you're gonna hear through the left channel so if you're using one of these cables and you hear Eddie Van Halen playing through the right channel predominantly your stereo is reversed. Now this one that has video and audio is a little different because this is a 2.5 millimeter jack, not a 3.5 millimeter jack. Uh, this is less commonly used, but you will find it on some camcorders. Uh, I want to go ahead and test it out. The common is fine. I don't, I'm, I'm going to assume that that's going to be the audio. And then the middle one will be the video hot. And it was. Now I do not know the signal configuration for TRRS, but I read that the second sleeve is the common. So let's check that first. And that appears to be the case. Let's see what the tip is. Tip is left audio. Let's see what the first ring is. That's video and let's see what the sleeve is. That's right audio. I want to see if it's consistent across all of these. I'm not going to make you watch me test all these. All six of my TRRS adapters were consistent and worked. I don't have a fine enough probe to reach into this, but this is for component video uh, with right and left audio out and a composite video. So this is for a specific camcorder. I'm going to try to figure out which camcorder this works with and pair it up with that camcorder. This cable fit in my Panasonic HCV100M and when I plugged it in I got this menu item where you can pick either AV out or component out. So I'm going to keep this cable with this camcorder. I used to own a camera that had a 2.5 millimeter TS video out and this adapter lets you hook it up to a TV set. That camera is long gone but I still have the cord here. Might as well check it out. The tip is the positive and the sleeve is the negative or ground if you prefer. These two cables are interesting. They're S-Video on one side and RCA on the other and what it does is it splits the video signal and the chroma signal. I often use them with this RX2 uh, digital video stabilizer because this only has RCA in and out and if I want to keep my chroma separate I can just use a barrel connector on the chroma and run the video through the stabilizer. These two cables are interesting. They're S-Video cables that also have left-right audio channels so everything is together. That comes in handy when patching S-Video signals. These three cords are all piggyback cords. They're all a little different though. This one has regular left and right RCAs on one side and it has these special left and right plugs on the other side that will allow you to plug another RCA in and combine the signals from the two cables. You can also use piggyback cords to split signals. This one has a mono RCA on one side and left and right on the other and again you can put an additional cable on here and again this could be used as a combiner or a splitter. 
This one has the piggyback plug jacks on one side and it has a tip ring sleeve quarter inch plug on the other side. That'll let you go from one type of connection to another. Here is another camcorder adapter. This one is strictly component video with the rectangular connector here. I want to find which camcorder this works on. This fit my very first HD camcorder I own, this JVC Averio. It plugs in right here, so I'm going to keep this cable with this camcorder. This pair of RCAs is color-coded for video and mono audio, but there is no significant difference between this and something for left and right channel audio other than the color of the connectors. All of these cables are color-coded for video and left and right audio. These were very common. They usually came with VCRs back in the day. On this one, someone installed an electromagnetic interference suppressor. Uh, cables can act as antennas, and you can pick up radio stations sometimes just by plugging in one of these cables into a receiver. Also, uh, devices like the alternator on your car can create electromagnetic interference. And this little device, which is basically just a magnet in here that it's looping through, suppresses that interference. This one has thicker insulation and maybe even a bigger gauge of wire inside here. So it was probably a more expensive cable when it was new. All of these cords are essentially the same. They're three RCAs on each side except they're color-coded differently. They're color-coded for component video, which was an analog method to transmit high-definition video before HDMI became the standard. This one, it looks like I took a regular old uh, interconnect and uh, color-coded it myself for component video. This is something that I put together back when I did four track recording. These four RCAs would plug into my Tascam four track. These four quarter inches I would plug into my Mackie. And I would use this whenever I mix down audio. All of these cables are just stereo left right pair. The ones in front here are the longer cable runs. I should probably get some EMI suppressors for these longer cable runs because longer cable runs are more susceptible to electromagnetic interference. So these are all shorter cable runs back here. This one's kind of interesting because it has right angle connectors on one side. Sometimes you don't want your cabling to be all bound together. So in this case, these are three separate cables in a set. This one is labeled for video, these two for left and right audio. Sometimes your video is going to a different location than your audio is, so it's good to have them separate. These are my strays. Uh, a lot of the times video just comes with video, but uh, this one probably had a left channel that came with it. These probably had right channels that came with them but they got separated at some point. And these two sealed packages just prove that I'm a sucker for a bargain. Uh, I have plenty of component video cables. I have plenty of RCA patch cables, but these must have been pretty cheap for me to pick up. I talked a lot about RCA connectors and a little bit about mini plugs in this video, but there's a lot of connector types I haven't covered like BNC, XLR, balanced quarter inch, unbalanced quarter inch, stereo quarter inch, and the adapters you can use to go between all these different types of connectors. So stay tuned for more. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. And remember, stay thrifty everyone.